Hey, what's up everyone? This is Derek Bros with the Freethinker House. And today we have a new update, number 11. We made it to 11 now. We're going into the end of the third month that we have been living here in the Freethinker House. We moved in October 1st. And we're going into a new year with lots of exciting projects. Last week was the winter solstice, the official beginning of winter, and a celebration that we like to mark here at the house. Uh, we had one of our community house parties. We had five different artists perform here in our house. And we raised money for Food Not Bombs Houston and Hands for the Homeless Houston, two different organizations that deal with homeless advocacy and we had people hanging out here in the in the medicine wheel in the garden we had a fire we had a sort of ceremonial burning away of, uh, of things we want to release and bad habits we want to let go of and things we want to bring into our new year. So that was cool to do that with the community. And the whole purpose of doing these house shows is not only to highlight the importance of music and art and this evolution of humanity, but also we are really connected in Houston's activist community, music and art community, and we want to show people what we're doing here at this house so just by creating a space and providing that space we give them the opportunity to come here have fun hear music and live free People are behind HQ right now. HQ. HQ at the Freethinker House. So that was our winter solstice party. Be sure to stay tuned for more updates on future community events. So if you live in Houston, you wanna come check it out, you can come discover new music and get involved in our community. The next thing we're working on for this update is quitting the banks. Johnny has been in the process of getting rid of his bank for the past uh, month or so, and he finally did it. So let's check in and see what he did. Hey, good morning guys. Uh, Johnny here, Matt Chase Bank. And hopefully this is the last time I ever got to come here. Hi right, guys, I did it. Uh, Accounts closed, moving on to credit union, just another step in becoming more free. Y'all could do it too. So in honor of the closing of my account, I'm about to put use to my Chase card uh, in a much better way. Now I got a new guitar pick. As you just saw, I uh, was able to quit Chase Bank, and I wanted to talk to you a little bit more about why I chose to move to a credit union and what the actual differences between them are. So I had a big problem with the government bailouts and other things that J.P. Morgan Chase is involved with. Uh, they actually were bailed out $25 billion from our taxpayer money along with Wells Fargo, Citigroup, and Bank of America. So that's $100 billion of our money that we just you know, gave to these guys for, for messing around and, and not keeping their, their business straight, you know? And overall, I think we can all notice and we can all agree that these people are untrustworthy and, you know, it's hard, it's hard to hold them accountable. That's, that's the other big problem I had with it. So the, the differences between the two, I suppose, are uh, credit unions, are cooperatively owned and they require you to be a part of the community to to be a part of it. Like I had to live within 10 miles of this credit union and uh, you have to go to school or go to church. Or basically you have to be a part of the community and 
people in the community who actually are members of the bank uh, are elected and run the bank. So it would be a lot easier for me to hold them accountable uh, than it would for me to go try to get to the top floor of one of those skyscrapers that the bankers are chilling in. Um, some of the other benefits is since it is local, they're known to do cool things like you have all kinds of cool benefits like you're going to get paid back for your ATM fees. I get like, I think $20 a month or something like that. Some are higher, some are lower. Um, higher interest rates in general, they're more likely to give you a loan because they're from your community. They're more likely to give you a business loan because you're building something right around the corner from them, which is good for everybody. It's kind of all these win-win situations that are good. But, uh, you know, I would recommend you go to your own credit union and you check it out and, and let us know, you know, how it improved. But if, if you think how I think about, uh, you know, these big banks and, and how we support them and stuff, we really are the only reason they're still standing. So you instead of, you know, getting angry and then just saying this is the way it is, why don't you do something about it? I encourage you to just go and uh, try to switch your bank to a more civil thing, whether that means you invest in Bitcoin, silver, or just try to pull your money out of the system any way, any way you can so that we're not being a part of and actively helping the, uh, the systems we don't support. Um, finally, these are my two credit cards. I'll cover up the numbers, but uh, these are the next credit cards to become guitar picks. Hopefully y'all watch me do that successfully. I'd like to see your videos of you turning your uh, credit cards into something more useful. Finally, Johnny is bank free, no longer supporting the system of enslavement, the banksters that defrauded the American people in the financial crisis, the banksters that fund pipeline projects and fund all kinds of things that we don't support and work with the Federal Reserve System. He's finally free of those. So now we want to encourage you guys, as Johnny said, to do find ways to turn your bank cards into something more useful than being a part of that system. One of the other projects we're working on here at the house is vermiculture, working with worms to to produce really good soil and a worm tea that's also good for the plants. And we caught up with Jeffer to talk a little bit about that project. Check it out. What are you doing there? I am checking the worm towers, worm bins for, uh, for eggs. And we finally have eggs for days. Get in here. Get deep in there. Yeah, oh, look at that. There they are. You so you here's the little pods. So this is what this is known as vermiculture. Working with worms. Yes. This is working with worms. We've had this bin for a couple of months now, and there was no. We just started out with our food waste and paper and as you can see it's all broken down into or it's starting to break down to this beautiful rich dark soil this is just so nutrient dense the worms are loving it they're starting to lay eggs in it or well, they have been for over a month now but now i'm seeing that there's a lot more of these things so the worm population's about to explode they supposedly double every I've read a different accounts, it's either six weeks or three months or whatever, so we started out with I think 4,000, so uh, I think I think we should have a couple more thousand in here now, and cool. So can you explain, like what's the, what do we have here, like we just got a bin with trat with the, the food and the cardboard in it, or do these two bins both have worms in it, or how does that work? Okay, so we have... The, the, the model the design I saw on, on uh, YouTube was you just buy these couple of gallon uh, totes and you stick them. You stick one at the bottom. I just drained this one. So you stick bricks at the bottom of this one, and you drill holes at the bottom of them. And so the uh, as you water them, the water just drains down, and you get this really rich. I'll show you on this one. You get this really rich uh, worm tea at the bottom, and there are some ninja worms that can crawl through the. Uh, <laughs> the the holes and get through so I need to throw them back into the worm bin or they I'll get that one guy later out of this. So that like that little tea at the bottom is really good for the soil? 
Like, yes. Could we put that in the oh, garden? Oh, like on the plants? I just, I just threw it all, all over the uh, the herbs. And uh, they just started singing as soon as I started, started watering them, so. Yeah. How long does it take for that to gather? Um, it's just like as the as the veg breaks down. So sometimes I'll, I have, we we had this rain bucket. And sometimes I'll just add, maybe a, a a large cup and just throw it in there, and it'll drain down in in a matter of minutes. But generally, it's just the broken down veg matter that, and the worm pea or whatever that uh, don't quote me on that. <laughs> that, that, uh, that drains down into this and then it smells just vile. I got this on my clothes one day and it just, can you smell it? Let the camera smell it. Oh, it's, it's nasty stuff. But I think the nastier the better, so I think the plants, the plants love it. So I'm going to throw some. Uh, so do you put it on the plants or in the, just in the roots or like, I mean, does it matter? I've just been pouring it. Just into the right into the beds. And okay, cool. I, I'm hoping it's not too concentrated, but I mean, you can see how lush all these plants are. The garden's are. looking I mean, beautiful. I'm not saying it's directly just from this, but I've done this about five or six times, and uh, cool. the plants are super healthy. So, so it seems to be working. It's working. These guys are huge. See that? It's freaking massive. That's everything we got for this week. Stay tuned later on this week and next week for more updates coming in the year 2017 as the Freethinker House moves into the next phase. We have community gardens growing here. We have uh, future deals with local farmers markets that are gonna start buying our produce. We're working on brewing our kombucha and getting our flavors down so we can start bottling and selling that. We're doing the microgreens. Please continue to watch what we're doing. Also, send us your videos. And if you wanna support us directly, you can sign up on our Patreon, patreon.com slash Thinker House. Thank you guys for watching. Live free, think free, and you will be free. Peace.